Hey guys, happy Saturday. So I have my glasses on and of course you can see my light through my glasses. So I'm sure that's annoying, but I figured you're getting a better view of the chalkboard if I do that. <clears throat> so I got a little ho home a little later from the shop than I had planned. So the project that I was going to do um, tonight, I will probably do that tomorrow. Um, what I'm going to do today is we are in the dining room. And this chalkboard, I talked about how I literally have had it the same. It's probably been a year, maybe two years. I'm thinking it's been two years. And I just see it, but I never really think about changing it. Or I think about changing it, but I don't have time to do it right then, so I don't do it. So what we're going to do today is change that out. And I'm just going to show you how I go about doing... Um, a chalkboard design. So I will just Google something or get on Pinterest and um, if I know what I want it to say, I will just Google like um, chalkboard and then, you know, silent night and then see what results come up. Or today, I didn't really know what I wanted to put on it. So I just Googled or I put on Pinterest um, Christmas chalkboard I think I just did Christmas chalkboard. And really the first one that popped up was the one that I liked. It says, and of course my phone doesn't switch anymore, but eat, drink, and be merry. So I thought that was a perfect thing considering we are in my dining room and maybe because it's a Christmas theme, then in January, fingers crossed, I will actually change it out. So first thing I do is I find one that I like and I use this as inspiration. So when I am going through and doing it, I will copy the font. I will take into consideration like, okay, the E and the A are about at the same height here. So when I write it down, I'm going to write it at the same height. Here, the E and A part, the first part's the same, but then they drop down the tail part of the A really low. And so I kind of calculate that as I'm drawing it out. I normally don't do any lines because this is easy to erase. And I am a fan of using actual chalk versus a chalk pen because if you don't switch out your chalk pen fast, um, it's gonna stain your board. Or I have never had it not stain a homemade chalk paint um, board, if that makes sense. If it was actually slate, then it might wash out off fine. But if you have made the board like I did, the chalk pen is like, it erases, it lightens, but it is always there. So a long time ago, I took this mirror, I painted the frame, I took some blue like um, painter's tape and taped a border around it so some of the mirror showed through. And then I just brushed on some chalk paint. And over the years, um, it has gotten deemed up in different places, but it doesn't bother me enough that I've actually touched it up. So it's okay. Um, and so uh, to, to redo the board, I will just start with some regular chalk. Now, of course, because this wasn't the project I was planning, um, I all my chalk is at the shop, but the kids could scrounge up this much chalk. <laughs> so we'll see how it works. Um, Another thing that you can do is, and I did this just because I was going to be coming on here. You just did a chalkboard. Um, is I will just write out on a piece of paper and kind of just practice the flow. Okay, so I'm sure you've seen where people will take a marker and do in a pretty font over like a piece of music paper or a map and they'll do a saying or something. Just practice a couple times with pencil, marker, pen, and then do it on the on the piece of paper and it's going to turn out fine. The biggest thing for me is just to kind of have a template. So I sold my husband's phone so I can use it as I'm up here. And then I just kind of look, I don't really care if I do this hauling at the bottom. So if I run out of room, it's not that big a deal. But otherwise, drink is probably taking up and I guess Mary too about the same amount of space. So we're figuring Mary is going to be around in here and be drink and eat. So I'm going to start up about here for eat. And I'm just going to go very lightly. Okay. 
And if I don't like it, then it doesn't really matter because I can erase it and I can change the shape. So for my eat here, I don't really like that it didn't come closer together. And then when you're done, I won't do it now because if you use a wet rag on it, you're, not, you're gonna have to wait until it dries in order to do it. But when you're done, you can go back and make those lines a little bit crisper if you want to. And then the thing to remember is that every time you're on a down stroke, so like if you're just doing normal cursive and you would be going down on your paper, then that is going to be thicker, okay? And that's kind of what gives it the professional look. So on each, we wouldn't be going down until about right here. And then I'm going up. I'm staying on the same line, but we're gonna go down here. kind of hard because my chalk is so little and then down here is going to be thicker and again I'm just trying to go lightly because you can keep going over it and making it darker I was not trying to make that darker, but it went darker anyway. Or fatter. And then I can look and see how they did the top of their T. And then I can go back and touch that up. So the downward stroke is gonna be fatter, which when you have chalk this size, it's a little bit more difficult, but you get the idea. So then when I look at the next section, I can see that my D needs to be all the way to the side of the E, and then my K loop should kind of be where the T little end part is. And so pretty much everything is online except for the bottom of the D, in the bottom of the K. And I'm trying to think kind of about how high I want to kind of stay in portion, proportion. So I want to dip my D down low. So there's kind of my first outline and then I'm going to go back over it. So this I would probably come in with a wet rag later to kind of fix. Clean it up a little bit. The nice thing too about doing a fat line is that then you can kind of get your curves to be the shape that, the, that you want them to be. So then we're going up. And then at the top here, we're going to go down. And it does sound like chalk on a chalkboard. It's making a terrible sound. Okay, so then we would be going up on the R. And then we're going to be going down here at the loop. And then going all the way down. And then down on the end.
Okay, I have a hard time talking and doing it at the same time, multitasking. But you can see that if you had a better piece of chalk than what I have, these upstrokes would be a little bit thinner. And so then you could um, really accentuate your downstrokes with a thicker um, piece of chalk or thicker um, line. And when you have this uh, randomness, it's a little bit harder. So the and B is going to be kind of nestled in here between our lower items. And that is just really simple, normal capital letters. And I can tell I went too big. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and wet it. And I'll just do the words below it. And my chalk just rolled, so I about had an even smaller chunk of chalk. So we're going to leave that. Hopefully it will dry before we need it to, to be done. And I'm going to go down here and do Mary. Mary is pretty much going to be in line with our... Um, edges of our drink. And I'm just thinking size wise on what I want my letters to be so they can be similar. too big and their Y is kind of high okay close enough so we're going to do our downstrokes and do those thicker I think that is honestly, if you can just remember that, no matter what your handwriting is like, if you can get the downstroke where it's fatter, it's automatically going to look more professional. that one little line there that's in the middle. And to erase those little lines, if you wet, um, if you want to be really particular about it, if you wet um, a cotton swab, then that will give you a little bitty edge. You wet it, you can clean and you can get into there so that that's not shaded or if you have a little spot where you need to be very um, kind of detailed with it, then you can do that with the co a wet cotton swab. Okay, so this looks like it's dry and so we're gonna go try the and Mary again. So I'm going to, to write a little bit smaller or at least skinnier So the D is with the I, so I'm much closer in my spacing this time.
And just like on the cursive, same thing on these straight ones, you're going to, and I can see I'm a little bit longer, but on N and A, I can lengthen those easily. On the down stroke, you're going to make that fatter. Actually, I should say it's always the left. So I lied. So the straight line on the left. And then if we want to go down and we want to add in some of this holly at the bottom, then we can. I'm going to start with the three dots, uh, three berries in the middle. And I'm going lower with mine than they did just because otherwise I'm going to end up hitting the Y. So I'm starting here on the end. With a couple of leaves. And then we're going to work back from that and do another set of leaves. And if I had the green and red, I would do that. And then we come and we're going to do another set. And after you do the white, if I brought home green and red, then you can um, just go over the white with the colored chalk instead of having to erase it and start completely over. Okay, and then that's how I make a chalkboard. Really simple. Once you have a sketch to go off of, just to, you know, basically freehand copy it um, onto your own chalkboard. So if you make something, then make sure and send me a picture or post it and tag me so I can see your chalkboard creation, guys. Have a good Saturday night.